Hello friends, this video on biological classification part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so now let us talk about reproduction in fungi. How do fungi reproduce? As I mentioned before also that they can reproduce both asexually and sexually. So let us first talk about the asexual reproduction. So there are many ways by which they can reproduce. One of them is reproduction by spores. So how do they reproduce by spores? What are spores? These are small particles which are produced by the reproductive organs. So you can uh, virtually imagine spores as seeds of a plant. So what happens? Seeds of a plant are small uh, particles which you take which you put under the soil and then they germinate to form a new plant so similar is the reproduction by spores and fungi these such small particles are ejected from the reproductive organs and then they are carried away to new places or they are carried over distances through air or wind or some other animals and then there those small particles are capable to give rise to a new organism so that is how fungi reproduce by spores Next is reproduction by mycelial fragmentation. You remember what is a mycelium? Mycelium are the interconnected network of hyphae, the mesh-like structure. Now, in some fungi, this mycelium on its own, it separates into pieces and each piece is capable of giving rise to a new mycelium. So, giving rise to a new mycelium is a new fungi altogether. What is fungi? The structure of fungi consists of mycelium. So each mycelium will then give rise to new mycelium, that is new fungi. Budding. In budding, a new organism develops and remains attached to the parent organism. Once completely grown, it gets detached. This process is very similar to the budding which, was, which is also observed in Hydra. We have spoken about that in uh, class 9th. So here if you see, yeast is a very good example of budding. Here this these are yeast. Now if you see on this yeast a small new outgrowth is developed. So this is the new organism. So it will remain attached to the parent organism. Now it will start growing. As it grows and it becomes mature it will separate out from the parent organism. So that is how budding takes place. So these are some of the important methods by which fungi reproduce asexually. Now talking about sexual reproduction. So in, uh, in fungi the sexual reproduction is quite different than the sexual reproduction in plants and animals. So here uh, some fungi whenever I talk of sexual reproduction I need two parent organisms right. So new organisms here cannot form from one parent. So now these two parent organisms here, in this case, the fungi can mate with individuals of opposite mating, while some fungi can even mate with in the, any individual type. So the mating type doesn't matter much. So we will talk about the sexual reproduction of fungi now. So let us see how do fungi reproduce sexually. So here we will talk about the general process as such but however we will see in the next few slides that the fungi again are categorized into different categories and they are categorized on the basis of their modes of reproduction because different types of fungi have different types of modes of reproduction. However, the general, the basic concept of reproduction will still remain the same. So here we will talk about the sexual reproduction of fungi. Sexual reproduction often occurs in response to adverse environmental condition. So in fungi mostly they can reproduce in favorable conditions they go for asexual reproduction but when the environmental conditions are adverse they generally go for sexual reproduction. So what happens in case of sexual reproduction? First of all, there is nothing called as male and female fungi. We do not say it is a male fungi, it is a female fungi. Then what do we say? We just say that there are two mating types in fungi. One is plus, one is minus. So positive and negative. So plus and minus denotes the two mating types in fungi. We do not call them as male fungi and female fungi. There are certain terms which you should be aware of before we start our discussion on the sexual reproductive cycle of a fungi. 
First is homothallic. Homo means same. So when two mating types are present on the same mycelium, it is known as homothallic. The term homo itself may, means same. So two mating types, both plus and minus, if they are present on the same mycelium, same mycelium means in the same organism because one mycelium denotes one fungi. So if both the mating types plus and minus are present on the same mycelium, we call that organism as homothallic. So heterothallic, hetero means different when the two mating types are present on different mycelium. Now the, these two different mating types can actually undergo sexual reproduction if they are compatible. So the mating types have to be compatible. So that is homothallic and heterothallic. So that is why I told in the previous slide that in fungus, it is not necessary that you should have the two mating types in two different organisms. It is also possible that both are present in the same organism. Haploid. What is haploid? A cell with a single complete set of chromosomes. I, However, I know that you are aware of this term because while we were talking about human reproduction, we have spoken about it in detail. But just for a quick review. So any cell, normally all the cells, for example, if you consider human beings, all cells in our body are diploid. That is, they have two set of chromosomes. What are chromosomes? They contain the genes. So we, any cell in our body, except the reproductive cells, except the sex cells, they are all diploid because they have two sets of chromosomes. One set obtained from our father, the other set obtained from our mother, right? But only the sex cells are haploid. So sex cells are haploid, that is therefore during sexual reproduction, one haploid cell will come from the male, one haploid cell will come from the female and they will combine together to form diploid cell and that diploid cell again will form the body cells of the child. Right? So haploid is a cell with single set of chromosomes. Diploid is a cell with two complete set of chromosomes. So this is how I have denoted. So here in diploid cell, you have two sets of chromosomes, red and blue. But in haploid, you just have one set of chromosome, which is blue. Okay. So with this knowledge, with this knowledge on basic terminologies, let us now talk about the sexual cycle in fungi. Now in fungi, the sexual cycle or the sexual reproduction happens in three important steps. So these three steps will always happen. Now even in sexual reproduction, uh, there are certain reproductive structures present in the fungi. Those reproductive structures will give rise to spores. They will produce spores and those spores will actually give rise to the new organisms. So what we have to see is how are those spores produced. Now as I said, different types of fungi undergo different types of sexual cycle. So the difference lies in the type of spores which are produced and the type of reproductive organ which produces those spores. Okay, so here we we'll start with the three step process. So let us first see what are the three steps. Plasmogamy, karyogamy, and meiosis. So these are the three steps in the sexual cycle of a fungi. So what happens in plasmogamy? So let us talk about each step one by one. Plasmogamy. What is the meaning of plasmo? The word plasmo has come from plasm. That is protoplasm, cytoplasm. So it has come from that. Cytoplasm or protoplasm, whatever you call it. And the term gammy means marriage. So that is marriage of cytoplasm. That is union of cytoplasm. So in plasmogamy, what will happen? Two haploid cells from the two mating types. Because in fungi also, we are considering that this sexual reproduction will happen between one plus and one minus. So this plus will give one haploid cell. The minus will also give one haploid cell. So in this step plasmogamy what will happen? The two haploid cells will fuse. Cells will fuse in the sense their cytoplasms will fuse. So what will happen here? Cytoplasm of two haploid cells fuse. 
so when the cytoplasm of two haploid cells fuse what is that that is why it is called cytoplasm marriage that is plasmogamy what is the result the result is that two haploid nuclei in one cell because only the cytoplasms have fused the nuclei did not fuse therefore now since the cytoplasms fuse so no more you have two cells you just have one cell with one combined cytoplasm but you still have two haploid nuclei right so this condition is known as dicaryon dicaryon di means two carryon means nucleus so dicaryon that means two nuclei so this kind of a cell with two haploid nuclei is known as dicaryon so this is the first step now in the second step that is karyogamy gamy again means marriage and karyo just now i told what does karyo means it means nuclei so now it is marriage of nuclei so now these two haploid nuclei which were present they will fuse so in this step two haploid nuclei fuse so what is the result the result is one diploid zygote so this fusion is actually known as fertilization because what is fertilization it is the fusion of two haploid cells to form a diploid cell so the fertilization is the second step now what happens okay so now the diploid zygote is also formed so what is going to happen now the third step is meiosis so now this cell will undergo repeated cell division and as a result of this cell division gametes of different mating types are produced so what are gametes they are nothing but the sex cells and what are those sex cells in case of fungi they are the haploid spores so that means in this step repeated cell division will occur and the result will be haploid spores what will happen to these spores now these spores will again germinate and it will give rise to new mycelia or new fungi so that is how sexual reproduction happens in case of fungi so let us quickly look at this diagram to understand it even better so here if you see you have haploid cells two haploid cell this is one haploid this is another haploid cell one from plus one from minus so this cells with these two cells will undergo fertilization fertilization first it will undergo plasmogamy that is they will combine together then it will undergo karyogamy where fertilization will take place as a result of fertilization a diploid zygote will be formed this diploid zygote will undergo meiosis so that is repeated cell division so it will form haploid spores now these haploid spores again will give rise to new mycelium or new fungi again one of those new fungi will be of one mating type one of those will be of the other mating type and again those two types of mating type will come together and they will again fertilize and this cycle will keep on repeating right so you understand the sexual cycle of a fungi so now if i ask you to relate the sexual cycle of a fungi with the asexual cycle how will it look like so let us just have a look what happens in the asexual cycle so let us see what happens in the asexual cycle we i'm trying to show both the asexual cycle and the sexual cycle that how they are related to each other now in the asexual cycle everything happens with the help of spores the spores germinate to form mycelium and these new mycelium denote nothing but the fungi again this mycelium 
will only give rise to spores. So these mycelium could give spores and the spores germinate to form new mycelium. Again, the, those mycelium will give rise to spores. So this is the asexual reproduction cycle. Now what happens in the sexual reproduction cycle? This mycelium will first undergo plasmogamy. Now here not only this mycelium, there will, an, there will be another partner who will be coming and joining. So two mycelium together will undergo plasmogamy, that is union of the cytoplasm. Then it will undergo karyogamy, that is union of the nuclei. So fertilization will take place, diploid zygote will be formed. Then that diploid zygote will undergo meiosis. As a result of meiosis, spores will be formed and these spores will again germinate to give rise to mycelium. So this is the sexual cycle. Right? Now the spores which we are talking about in asexual reproduction and the spores which are formed during sexual reproduction, they are different from each other. They are not the same types of spores which are being produced. Now depending upon the types of spores which are produced and the type of the reproductive organs or the reproductive structures which produce these spores, fungi are further classified into four different types. So we will talk about those four categories of fungi in the next few slides. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.